every time I come back, it's a wave of emotions. Um, and also a wave of disbelief because it's still shocking to know that people can just decide to kill and kill so many people in a short time span. These are my ancestors. These are people that my parents saw die. Um, and you still feel it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm just the next generation. Imagining what their life was like or who they could have become. The 1994 genocide is continuously a health crisis. There were those who still have bodily pain, and then there's also the mental health aspect of things. We still have some way to go in terms of healing our minds, in terms of, in terms of healing our, our spirits. My name's Amanda Akaliza. I'm currently the president of uh, an NGO. It's called Humeka, which means breathe. I am Rwandese and I've lived in different countries. I'm hoping to learn a lot more about the healthcare system within my country to engage with people who have come up with innovative ideas and see what people are, are, are up to. For me, health means life. And this is interesting because in, in Kenya, Rwanda, health and, and life are, are actually the same word, which is the obuzima. By life, I mean everything between birth and death, you know, um, being able to fulfill your dreams, being able to fall in love, being able to see your children grow. When it comes to health, the goal of everything that we do should be to make it easy to access, equitable for everyone, on time for everyone. The further we go in the future, the more people are getting either richer or poorer, and those who have the finances, are what's their mindset? Are they only take, caring about technology as a source of how to make more money, or are they caring about it of how to create ways for human beings to live healthy? Yenatumpaganini <laughs> Kujira <laughs> 
ntangira kwibaza nangira kwibaza nk'ukuntu nakorera gudufaranga ntuguru nyenda ndumukira hari ya mvuga ngo nteganyirije umwana atumurwa no kumvanga afuye ko nari navuye cyane ko na ko mwe umunsi nageze nageze rukoma nubundi ko na nange bwanye nimvaga ko nta ntaherezo mfite nta ntangirira ubwo nyine umvaga ko ngo nange ngiye nange na nabibaje umuganga nimaze se mugaya ko mwambwiye ngo nyuma y'iminota mike ngo ndambunye ubufasha bwa marasu tubaka kanyaraje se no umuntu muyatuma ati go yati dufite uburyo tuyabonamo asa ngo nakana ko kadege nyine ubwo kugamayirwe mbonye bayazanye ko muganga aratubwiraga ati umuntu bateye amaraso bahaye ubufasha bwa maraso ati natimana ibikuye ho gupfa kwiti kuko ibimutabaye vuba bakamuzanira ibyo akeneye I'm Shami. Shami. Good to meet you, Amanda. It's good to meet you. So, how did Zipline start? What was the idea behind it? The idea behind Zipline is how can you change logistics for the future to make sure that aerial logistics is an integrated component? How can you deliver anything to anyone, anywhere, starting with vital? products, vital medical products, and then eventually integrating more and more and more. So now, this is flight operations, right? That's where the flight is launched from. That's where it's recovered from. So basically, once a package is prepared, you scan the QR code, you tell it where it's going to go, and you associate the package to a drone. Now the drone takes on that route, and then from the moment you launch to the moment it comes back, everything is autonomous. So you don't have to do anything. We started with one hospital after a few months, went to five, a few months, on and on. Now we are doing over 410 hospitals wow. across the country. of Health as the first client also was involved in the process to figure out what's the best application that this drone can help with. And blood distribution was the first that actually came to mind. Why? Blood is one of those products that have a very short shelf life, requires special storage conditions, and is actually it's not expensive, it's actually one of those rare products because to get blood, a person has to donate blood. This is where we are, Muhanga. And the 80 kilometer radius, you can see facilities all around to where we actually go. That's Butaro. So from here to there, 45 minutes. So whenever we are really doing this, it, it becomes a lot of fun. The, the, there are areas where we can't fly depending on what's happening, but the rest of the areas is really like free to fly. The hospital like Butaro takes 45 minutes for us to get there from here. Wow. By car, that's six hours. Three hours to go get the product, three hours to come back. So it's really like revolutionary. Where we are is quite far from the city and in many still developing countries it's, it's quite complicated to get uh, such, you know, service, medical service, especially in an emergency. Mm. 
ngo kubona nza haravu nyine ubu ubu bafite nakaze nabampimbye ngo ndi musuka bitewe no kuno bambonaga nkuwangeraga yagendaga akabwira mugenzo ati wa mushuti wacu wabimize nabi none we yakumva bamubwiye ati bamuteye amaraso ati wagiye gupfa kumva ko nyine ngiye gupfa kuko nange ubwa nyine abantu umuntu bateye amaraso byanze bikunze agiye gupfa cyase nkumva ya amaraso ni kubavuga ngo umuntu arayaterwa gapfa cyangwa baga kuba kagutera y'umusazi ngo cyangwa yiki ngo nayitaga nekereza ngo gupfa cyangwa se kuba umusazi nibyo bintu byambaga mu nako kubwa mahirwe navuye yo nta kibazo ndumeze uto ndumva biri kugenda kuko igisebe kiri kugenda cyegerana nsano kwa muganga nyine bakamfukira bakanyogereza nyine kikagenda cyegerana should really given up on life but being that the medical system was there to save her and protect her. She was able to now come back to her two children. The way health insurance works in Rwanda is we have a system called Mutuelle de Santé. So it's a universal health care system in which the poorest are entitled to free health care and the wealthiest pay the highest premium of $8 per year. Another thing that they have put into place is to decentralize the healthcare system, making sure that communities, vulnerable communities that aren't able to have access to the hospitals or other forms of clinics are able to have uh, services brought to them. They also designed a sort of mobile clinic in which a clinic has all the basic medication that can go into the communities, making it much easier for people to be able to be vaccinated and, and to also be able to receive the care that they need. Monica Tete mentioned how although there are um, sort of these advanced tools that are there to support, they still need more doctors. This is why these forms of innovation are coming up, just so that they could fill those gaps and those spaces. Um, but what would be even better is to see more people have those careers, take those jobs, and go into those communities. Kwa no kwizera cyuko ababihanze babihanze ari ba ari abakuru babikoreshaga bagakira nange nizera ko imana ariyo yaremye ibyo bintu ngo bibeho yaravuze ngo bibeho bigira mu maro mu gihe cyabyo numva rero ko mu gihe cyabyo ari ngo mwe munaje arwaye yabonetse ko mu gihe cyabyo bya bita imana yaremye igaha abakuru kumenya ubumenyi bwo kuvuga ngo ni ubwongo bigatandukana nibindi uburyo mvoreshe igicucu rero nange nasanze nyoko kuru wabenyeretsa ariko abikora ubwa kizungu nabo navuga ariko nkubwo umuntu wavonetse kwa mu kizungu nyene kwa muganga baragenda bakabandikira ati muje kuca mu cyumba ye giye gaca mu cyumba cyangwa yadafite ubushobozi bujya guca mu cyumba araza nka murebera muri cyaje cucu For a patient in a rural area who makes less than $2 a day, actually, on day one, they usually have to travel. And then on day two, that's when they, uh, for example, go to the hospital, they wait, they, they get diagnosed, and then they have to wait until the next day to go back home. There's a lot of cases where people will decide to not get care just because they can't afford it. In the U.S., we have about 100 radiologists per million, but in Rwanda, we have about one radiologist per million. And you can see the same in, in health professionals in general, that there is scarcity and inequity in terms of the expertise and resources that we have. I am the founder of Insidive, a Rwandan software and teleradiology company. 
We allow hospitals who don't have radiologists access those radiologists remotely. You're looking at uh, Incitive's uh, uh, teleradiology system. We call it the Incitive Diagnostics Platform. And this is a platform that we use both to collect medical images, but also to diagnose patients. It means that a hospital without a radiologist can actually uh, let, yes, give access to the hospital with a radiologist. And a radiologist with, uh, in that hospital can serve more than just the hospital he's in, but he can also serve multiple hospitals. Wow. So I mentioned that our intention eventually is to perhaps take radiologists out of the hospital and have them in environments that are more high-speed internet with more advanced technology that allow them to make these decisions fast. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to do is to maximize the usage of, of the resources, and in this case, the resources are the radiologists. When I, I saw my grandma getting sick and, and dying when I was a, a little kid, we didn't even know what she had as a, as a disease. It was the first time that I actually realized how much it means to have good health. Odas grew up in Rwanda and uh, went to MIT, which is one of the best, you know, technology schools in the U.S. and all over the world. He was able to learn from incredible professors. He found his way, you know, into the tech world and something that was of, of you know, fascination to him. This is my first venture that I've founded and also the, with the challenges with the ecosystem being very young, very new. A lot of places we go, we are the first uh, people to go there. So th that can be challenging. But overall, I like that uh, I can at least uh, look back and actually be able to say, you know what, I, I did that and I built the technology, I helped people. But absolutely should be proud of the fact that you are creating something entirely new and something that can be you know, can save lives. So thank you. thank you so much for, you know, sharing and teaching me about this. Um, and I hope to, you know, see more of what you do in the future. Uh, thank um, you so much, so, definitely. Yeah, it was yeah. very nice to meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you, Amanda. Bye -bye. Thanks, bye. felt like a weight, just like the water. You're just underneath there and it's a weight over you. You feel physically exhausted, you feel scared. And that to me describes a mental health issue such as depression and anxiety. You feel like you're in the deep end and you're always wondering, will I ever get out? Will I ever be able to breathe again? I did a lot of research on it, trying to understand. So transgenerational trauma, in short, is basically trauma that's been passed down through generation. You know, it's trauma that has not been healed yet, and it can manifest itself in the fact that your parent has adapted to a unhealthy coping mechanism, and now you learn how to deal with your suppression through that unhealthy coping mechanisms. Because, you know, children, they learn from their parents. My father was a soldier um, during the genocide, trying to liberate the country. My mom was um, helping and calling for help and, and helping with children as well, orphanages. So, um, and after that, they didn't have a healing process because they were coping. They, they couldn't have a, 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 a intimate relationship with me. They could have a relationship, but not an intimate one, because they didn't even know how to have a relationship with themselves. Okay. 
So, my name is Amanda Akaliza, and I am the president of Humeka Organization. After I graduated from high school, right, I started to struggle with my mental health. I started to decline over time. And it went to a place where I would suffer getting out of bed. I would suffer going to brush my teeth. Um, and I didn't have a reason why. I couldn't explain it because if people would ask me, they would ask me, why? Why are you depressed? You go to school in the US, why are you depressed? Your parents can afford food on the table, why are you depressed, right? Like they would ask me why, and even me, I would ask myself, why am I depressed? Like, I have everything, but for some reason, I still cannot get out of bed, and I'm still struggling with whatever, like the sounds and noises in your head, right? It got to a point where it felt cloudy. Like, you know, you feel like a cloud over your head, and it's tough, and you just can't... It got to that point, but I'm lucky because I had the space to seek help. But there's so many people who don't have that, right? There's so many people who are suffering, and they don't, even, they don't have the space, they don't have the money, they don't have the time, their parents are not listening, right? And so that's what Humeka is about. So we are going to start with the first activity. Look at yourself in that mirror and remember a time when you were young, when you were in high school and how that felt like. So we said, okay, we want to create a space where public school students can be able to access mental health care for free. We also noticed that a lot of therapists didn't have interpersonal skills. We are going to give university students the ability to come in and have internships, you know, have interpersonal skill. And it can vary from whether they want to learn about coping mechanisms, whether they want to learn about individual therapy, whether they want to go into the community itself. Um, so that's the ecosystem we're trying to create. There's a lot of people who are ready to step in and um, take a risk and build new ideas and find new solutions. They also remind us, you know, they remind us where we came from. They remind us how we need to attach any form of innovation to culture. And that's important going down the line because we do want to maintain an identity still. Us as Rwandis, we're creating ideas and we're making homegrown ideas, and it's by us, for us. The Kigali Genocide Memorial stands for remembrance. So it reminds us to basically keep building a better community, um, a healthier community. We went from a space where there were dead bodies um, on the streets, there was no infrastructure for health, there was no system built on how to handle or organize that, to now having innovative ideas. In terms of access, we're not where we need to be. But in terms of innovation, I can say that, yes, there's huge innovative ideas that's coming about. Every generation has a mission, right? My parents' generation was to give us a safe home. But now our mission within our generation is now to heal those wounds. We, we already went through the worst. If we can come through that, we can tackle the rest. <laughs> 